Well, the first couple of years, Rune Ollage was in the truck for every telecast. And, but I honestly don't remember him once ever saying, do this or do that. He produced the first Super Bowl we did. I, I can't quite recall the year that was. But that was later in, you know, uh, like 10 years later before we got the Super Bowl. Uh, in one of the contract negotiations, he negotiated in uh, doing the Super Bowl on every third year. And, but he needs a hands-on producer, as he was in the Olympics. Uh, uh, he was just not a not uh, sit behind the desk kind of a boss. He was an, uh, and that's how he grew up in television. Uh, uh, he was very creative. He he realized perhaps more than anyone, and particularly at that time, how important it was to for the audience to understand the individual and, w and put some heart into the telecast. Who who these people really were? What were they thinking when they? And this applied as much to, uh, to the Olympics as it did to pro football. And he had covered, of course, several Olympics before we did a Super Bowl on ABC. He just took the same awareness of what the audience wanted and brought that to, brought that to football. But, he was, but the Olympics, uh, his coverage of the Olympics uh, changed forever how the sports will be covered. And the, the up close and personal, not just watching some athlete, you know, jump over a bar or, or pole vault 16 feet. Uh, what, what, what was the makeup of this acti uh, athlete? Why did they do that? How did they get that? How did they get that way? And Jim McKay was brilliant at it, and we had some wonderful writers. Jim was a good, great writer himself. But people walked away from a telecast of an Olympics or a, a Rune Arley's Wide World of Sports segment, uh, in me doing Evil Knievel or something like that. They would know who these people were, because we just didn't show the event. We talked about the people involved in it. Arun, he never really stepped back from. It. He stopped coming to the game, but he never was off the phone. And while well, he didn't phone us personally, he was <coughs> talking to the, uh, the directors and the producers. <coughs> and then later, of course, towards uh, the last few years, uh, when I wasn't there. Uh, well, actually, it really, I guess in, the, in about 1994, 95, he walked away from it, become uh, the head of news, and when he really focused on that, so he did really. Actually, actually you're right. He, he really uh, he put his. You know, he really cared about news. He cared about uh, making an impact. I think uh, in general, I think he had done everything uh, he could in sports. He, he he was the greatest gift sports ever had, and not just football. Football was incidental to the, and some of the other things he did, like the coverage of the Olympics, the coverage of international events, and he, when he talked about the politics involved in it, and he had great reporters like Keith Jackson and uh, and Jim McKay, and I like to think occasionally me. We covered, I covered sporting events all over the world for him. And behind the Iron Curtain, I uh, uh, did ski races in Bulgaria when nobody went to Bulgaria. We had a had a lady KGB laid with me, and uh, not a bad looking one either. She, she, she also, I knew she was carrying, <laughs> carrying heat, as I might say. And uh, uh, he, he had a feel about what he put on the air, uh, that he was trying to accomplish something. Not, he was trying to get to the soul of it, if you will, what it was really about. Not just the Nick score. <coughs> Games that people play, uh, why do they do it? Why do they do it as well as they do it? Uh, how can they possibly do that? And the motivation, uh, whether it be physical or, uh, or mental or spiritual, whatever it is. He, and he, he hungered for that sort of knowledge. And he knew that he liked that. So <clears throat> if you ever watched an event with him, you could understand. He, he would, uh, he was not critical of the announcers, but he, and I had watched several of them with him. He was, uh, uh, wondered why they didn't, he wanted more information, he wanted more information. And I think the, he also was aware too that too much, too much information could you get blurry eyed over it. So I mean, it's a thin line you walked and you, and I think that thin line on one side of for him was who and what are they about and why are they able to do this? And that's, that's what he wanted to know after he saw an event.
and he preached that in his own way um, to all of his announcers.